Hello there guys, hope everyone's good. Today's video, I'm gonna tell you about the best three months of horse racing that you're gonna find this year and every year. I've been betting since 1989. These are definitely the best three months of horse racing, not just for horse racing, but for offers. So also it doesn't even matter if it's just for offers. If you're a Betfair trader, these um, festivals will produce the most liquidity. Now I'll go on more about liquidity that it can sometimes be a disadvantage, but I'll go on about that towards the end, which I'll no doubt forget. But in this video, we're gonna specify all the festivals and why. Um, I did do a video about Cheltenham, how to prepare for it the other day. This one here, I'll leave the link for that down below. In that video, it does specify to prioritize Tuesday the 15th of March, the first race, which is the Supreme Novice Race Hurdle, and that is all at 120, I think. Um, also, if you're not following me on Instagram, I'm at PitBets. This Instagram story is going out quite regular. So, um, as regards Cheltenham, no introduction really needed there. Topped up with offers, Cheltmas, and all of that. Aintree, we've got after that. So, two or three weeks after that, we've got Aintree. Now, traditionally, if you're a horse race person, if your horse didn't do that well in Cheltenham, because you have the same type of horses that come out of Aintree National um, Festival, they'll try and do well in there. So if you've had any unlucky runs, they like to try and do well at Aintree. So always bear that in mind, guys. So you've got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday at Cheltenham. And in the Grand National meeting, we've got Thursday, Friday and Saturday. So I don't know whether you want to note these down to either book them off of work or, as I said in the, um, in the article, uh, book it off with the boss or with the missus or if the missus if you is your boss then um, good luck also bet365 last year they've done this offer and they've done it i think since at least 2009 now it's a 125 pound offer if you place a bet each way they'll give you the each way part free so this is well worth it although it's hard to find qls hard to find um matches with qls you could take the value betting approach with that if you haven't done any value betting before and you want to use some software, there's a link below for Rebel Betting. So that's a good one to book off. Thursday the 7th of April, Friday the 8th of April. I've previously in the past booked work time off and also revolved holidays around them not being around these times, you know, because if you're going to optimise your betting, then you want to hit this kind of thing first, build outwards from this, right? So if you're serious about this game, you got to note these dates down, guys, and, and do that because you've got to be efficient. What's the point in pulling your bollocks out for the rest of the year when you don't take advantage of these really cream times? So the reason this is a good time of the year is straight after that, we've got the Guineas meeting, which is at Newmarket. The Guineas is... I haven't done that. I haven't got the page up for that. The Guineas is for three-year-olds uh, on the... On the first day, where is it? Friday the 29th of April. So yeah, guys, excuse that amateur part of the video, but there was a reason I wanted to bring this page up. It's not because I'm reliant on a page, because this is quite different this year. Uh, they're having a three-day meeting this year, Friday, and then on Saturdays are 2,000 guineas. This is for the Colts, which are the male horses. They're all three-year-olds, and this is over a mile in distance. And the 1,000 guineas day on Sunday the 1st of May is for the fillies, which is the girls of racing, and that's also over a mile. Um, after that, we've got the Chester Boodles Festival. Now, this is why I love this time of year, because this um, meeting, as it's got on a pit bet site, Wednesday the 4th of May to Friday the 6th of May. Now, what I like about this Chester meeting um, is that it's just after the guineas, and also the York Dante is the week after that. So you've got this week, that week, and then the following week, and the good thing about these Chester and York meetings are they're weekday meetings because they're on channel, sorry, ITV, um, ITV4 usually, that, those kind of channels. You've also got the Saturday um, ITV racing offers. So you've got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday there, then the same again the following week and the week before Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like that. So this is why it's a really cream time. I do like this Chester festival. This Chester is a very tight track. Uh, it's one, I think it's the oldest track in the UK, this Chester. If you do Betfair trading, I recommend doing stalls 1, 2 and 3 for front runners if you've got front runner strategy. I'll be posting every day in Cheltenham and I might, might post every day some trading strategy um, videos 
to accompany this festival. I don't know if you'd be interested in anything like that, guys. Do you want to hear more about things like that, about front runners, why the front, um, why the inside stalls are important at a tight track like Chester to get the lead? When to exit out if you're not leading within, say, I don't know, 100 or 200 metres to hit that exit out button. I don't know if you're interested. Tap away below, please, guys, because I don't know what you guys want. But this, I love this meeting. I love this track. Sad for me, I've been watching horse racing for 30 years and never been. So that is definitely on the bucket list. And like I mentioned, from the pit bet site, we've then got the York Dante the week after that which is also on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And like I said, you've got the um, ITV racing on the Saturday after that. Then we've got the Derby. Now, the Derby is on Friday the 3rd. It says Ladies' Day. So that would be the race called the Oaks, which is the equivalent of the, the Derby. So the Oaks is for the female horses, which are called the Phillies, and the Derby are for the male horses. Uh, this is over one mile four. So traditionally, you sometimes get these horses that do well in the 2,000 guineas. And although that is one mile and it's stepping up to one mile four, some horses have gone on to do the double. When I first started watching horse racing, incidentally, in 1989, I remember my most favourite race, Nashuan of all time. It won the 2,000 guineas at three to one. And it also won the derby at five to four favourite. Uh, I know that because I was a Willie Carson fan. So then after that, we have got... So after that, guys, the middle of June, usually nice and warm weather. Well, this is England, I know, so it's probably going to be raining. 14th to the 18th of June. Book that one off. This is probably... I know Cheltenham is Cheltenham. This is probably my favourite festival. It's got loads of glitz and glamour to it. Royal Ascot, I've been there a few times. <clears throat> probably about 10 times. Really nice track. If you're going to go to any track go to that one that's the daddy in my opinion and this meeting is quite interesting i remember i posted a video here two or three years ago about my mate who had done a two pound fifty each way frankie de Tory accumulator like a mug and i posted this bet here saying mug punting is it really mug punting he sent me through a whatsapp and it's got the whatsapp shown in the video i'll leave the link um for this video down below and he said shall i cash out on this bet because I stand to win a quarter of a million or something like that yet my cash out is 29 grand I said mate because I'll show you the um I'll show you the messages in the video I said mate don't ask me these things basically I'm not commenting on that so uh, he ended up cashing out but because he hesitated um he lost seven grand hesitating and the reason for that was this I did an article about the Frankie effect. So Frankie de Tour is probably going to retire sometime soon because I think he's 50, early 50s. And regardless of what he says, you've only got so much that you can do. I know there's other jockeys that have gone into an old age. It's not really old nowadays, 50, but he's not going to be around in 10 years' time, I don't think. And this is the Frankie effect. So if you're a Betfair trader, again, I might be posting videos about Betfair trading over Cheltenham. So 2019, I posted this about Frankie de Tory, who was on his fourth um, ride at Cheltenham. At uh, Cheltenham, what am I on about? Royal Ascot. And he was on this horse called Turgenev. Now, these were the true relative odds of, of Frankie de Tory winning. This was the true odds of him winning. But because he had won the last three races, the odds of him went down. And why is that? It's called weight of money, right? So you had all the bookmakers, accumulators, and like what my mate had in this mug punting video, that had all that weight of money going on to this horse here, Turgenev, they virtually halved in price, which, in my opinion, gave a lot of value to the other horses in the race because their probability was no less than they were when this dip happened. But the sheer weight of money that happens in horse racing markets forced this to go down. And the reason why I stress Frankie de Tory so much is he's one of the most uh, high-profile um, kind of jockeys it doesn't have to be a jockey it could be a horse or even a trainer not so much a trainer but these are the things to watch out for with betfair trading if you want to earmark these things down in this article it does point you into a few pointers about how you can also look for namesakes in horses and things like that that are all connected frankie de Tour is a good one to hit on and that's why i hope he doesn't retire because if you have a frankie in 1996 i think it was when he had his seven timer and 
one bookmaker, Gary Wiltshire, even went skint for it. Um, but this is called Weight of Money. I'll leave a link for it down below, uh, a couple of articles about that. If you're interested in this kind of thing being posted on these um, festival days, guys, I will do it if there's people going to be watching it, but it's up to you. Also, subscribe to the newsletter down below, guys. I'll be having some updates of new things. And also, feel free to use my calculators on this website that I put on here years ago. It doesn't really get much um, many views. I've got a two-up calculator. Also, guys, if you're not subscribed to a service and you want some free match betting calculators, I've got a two-up calculator here, an each-way calculator, a rule four calculator for non-runners, and a fractions to decimals calculator, I suppose, for newbies, even though I come on here sometimes and do weird odds like 85 to 40 on here to check what that is, be of use. I've got a lot of articles on here, guys. I'll be doing a revamp of this website very soon. But, um, yeah, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in a couple of days. Good luck, guys.